we learn that Mother Earth is capable of things we never thought possible. As science has progressed, we start to get a better glimpse into the ever-elusive universe surrounding us. These recent discoveries will remind you not only of the power of nature, but our human potential to understand it. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three interesting discoveries and the facts behind them. A massive lake in Antarctica has vanished from satellite pictures. Overnight, an enormous lake in Antarctica has mysteriously vanished from all satellite images. A massive lake in the Amory Ice Shelf in East Antarctica seemed to drain overnight, and researchers are left scrambling for answers. The lake was covered by ice for the majority of its existence until mid-2019, when the majority of the ice melted. During this time, the lake held somewhere between 600 and 750 million cubic meters of water. This lake held more water than the Sydney Harbour in Australia. To the shock and amazement of researchers and scientists around the globe, the 600 to 750 million cubic meters of water simply vanished. When the discovery was made, researchers began scouring through historical satellite images to find the exact date the water had vanished. Images provided by NASA were the main source of information used during this inquiry. While no one knows for certain how this amazing mystery came to fruition, the leading theory is that the water somehow returned to the ocean. The prominent hypothesis for how this occurred can be explained by the existence of ice shelves. The theory follows that at the bottom of the lake was a shelf of ice which served as a sort of plug drain for the lake. The ice shelf cracked under the mounting pressure of the water within the lake, and when the shelf cracked, the water was released through the gap which flowed back into the ocean. Through extensive research, it was found that the lake went from being filled to entirely drained within three days. Roland Warner, who served as a leading researcher on the phenomenon, claimed, We believe the weight of water accumulated in this deep lake opened a fissure in the ice shelf beneath the lake, a process known as hydrofracture, causing the water to drain away to the ocean below. Members of the research team collectively agree that global warming may cause more ice shelves to break shortly. An excerpt found in the published study regarding the drained lake stated, Antarctic surface melting has been projected to double by 2050, raising concerns about the stability of other ice shelves. Since this astonishing discovery, the lake appears to be slowly filling back up with water. It has been theorized that the ice shelf froze back over, which has allowed water to be retained in the once-drained lake. A gravitational wave observatory on the Moon could hear 70% of the observable universe. An innovation in astronomy has led to the creation of a gravitational wave observatory. This observatory has the capacity of capturing waves transmitted through space, allowing us to essentially hear the universe surrounding us. This is a groundbreaking development in astronomy and has the potential to revolutionize the study altogether. In the few short years that the observatory has been in effect, expert astronomers have gained access to information that was previously deemed to be unattainable. Black holes hold their position as one of the most untouchable aspects of space exploration. Even the most educated and creative astronomers cannot begin to explain the full scope of what a black hole encompasses. The new technology employed by the Gravitational Wave Observatory has substantially increased our understanding of black holes by honing into the gravitational waves that are produced by the phenomenon. The largest obstacle facing innovation is the presence of background noise. Since the observatory is based on Earth, there are many waves produced by nature and human creation that negatively impact the results of the observatory. There are currently many ways of minimizing this effect. Surrounding the observatory are many technologically advanced devices that detect waves emitted within the Earth's atmosphere. These waves are accounted for and nullified by the gravitational observatory to directly study waves coming from outside our atmosphere. Furthermore, the observatory focuses exclusively on high-frequency gravitational waves which generate hertz between 10 and 1000. This level of frequency is not produced on Earth and can be largely attributed 
only to black hole mergers. However, this method is not without fault. Many astronomers warn that this is not an effective way of obtaining accurate results. The most effective way of circumventing this unfortunate truth is by sending the observatory into space, and astronomers across the globe are hoping to achieve just that. The most prominent plan in the works is to send the new gravitational wave observatory to the moon. While this would be extremely difficult to do without damaging the observatory or causing other logistical problems, the moon is an excellent candidate for the observatory's new landing spot. The Earth is swallowing up more carbon from its atmosphere than scientists previously thought. Leading scientists from Cambridge University and NTU Singapore have recently made a groundbreaking discovery in the field of climate change. A shocking new discovery has found that collisions of tectonic plates below the Earth's surface are drawing massive amounts of carbon from the atmosphere at levels we never thought possible. While we have had the understanding that slow-moving tectonic collisions hold the power of removing carbon from our atmosphere, the true potential of this phenomenon was not yet fully appreciated. The areas in which carbon is sucked into the Earth's interior are known as subduction zones. These zones are found at the point where tectonic plates meet under the Earth's crust. Carbon is drawn into the zones and pushed down into the center of the Earth, where they are essentially trapped. Stefan Farsang, a leading scientist studying this groundbreaking news, has stated, We currently have a relatively good understanding of the surface reservoirs of carbon and the fluxes between them, but know much less about Earth's interior carbon stores, which cycle carbon over millions of years. The team's findings, published in Nature Communications, quickly gained the attention of geologists, meteorologists, and climate experts across the globe. Their peer-reviewed journal suggested that two-thirds of the carbon that is absorbed in these subduction zones does not re-emerge to the surface in the form of volcanoes. This contrasted the widely held belief that most carbon that was absorbed by the Earth was quickly released back into the atmosphere. This discovery may open the door for new opportunities in combating climate change. Using this uncovered potential to reduce the carbon in the atmosphere could prove to be an extraordinary leap forward in the fight against climate change. By focusing attention on this area, we may be able to obtain a more comprehensive understanding of the life cycle of carbon on Earth. Unlocking the clues as to how we can take advantage of these processes may be the missing piece to eliminating the threat of climate change. This discovery has also highlighted the fact that there is much we do not know about the Earth's interior carbon stores. These reservoirs are commonly referred to as deep carbon stores. Acknowledging this lack of understanding directs attention to the issue. Furthermore, recognizing the potential that we may lie in wait allows for more funding to be guided towards the research of these stories. Uncovering the true capabilities found within the Earth's subduction zones has created this ripple effect that we are only seeing the beginning of. As more interest is directed towards this topic, we may find more funding and possibly more amazing discoveries. So far, plate subduction is the only known natural pathway for carbon to reinstate back into the Earth's interior. Expanding our understanding of the process is crucial to mitigating the health and environmental risks that increased carbon has caused within the atmosphere. The bulk of the ongoing research into subduction zones is focused on understanding how they operate and how their function can be optimized. To expand on this research, manageable replications have been made to observe. These replications involve creating a controlled area in which high pressures and temperatures are created to mimic natural subduction zones. A diamond anvil is used to exert extreme levels of pressure onto an item or surface area and the anvil is subsequently heated by an external source to accurately produce results that would be found in subduction zones. These intricate replicas have yielded successful results as they can produce comparable results that would be expected in nature. As we dive further into the field of subduction zones, we may just find the turning point necessary for reversing the damage of climate change as we know it. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. 
Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.